This is Cece Carter with Keller Williams First Coast Realty, and today I'm here with India Powell, co-founder of Emanuel Properties. And so after a decade of renting properties the traditional way, she and her husband decided in 2020 to enter the Airbnb market. They have two active Airbnbs and they are currently renovating a third. India, thank you so much for talking with me today. Absolutely. Thank you for having me, Cece. Why don't you tell us what an Airbnb is? Absolutely. So an Airbnb uh, is essentially a short-term rental. Short-term rental, meaning um, a client or a guest can rent that space for a defined period of time. It's not as long as a traditional 12-month lease. Um, it may be for as little as a few hours, uh, up to 90 days or so. Uh, anything longer than that would be kind of long-term. Um, and you can rent that space consecutively for that time. You can rent it over the course of a few days within a time period, um, but it is something that is uh, non-traditional uh, leasing. Uh, it typically is fully furnished and also has all of the utilities included. And from time to time, it may have other amenities as well, such as food or beverage service or different things like that. Very, very good. Well, with that in mind, why don't you tell us a little bit about the Airbnbs that you currently offer? Yeah, absolutely. So as you mentioned earlier, um, my husband Jamal and I, we started our first Airbnb um, officially in 2020. Um, I say officially because back in 2016, we made a decision that we would try to possibly short-term um, lease out a townhome that we had owned because we were looking to move in our city, but we just wanted to move across town because we were doing a lot of driving. Um, and we were toying around with the idea of renting it out to long-term renters or trying out this new short-term rental Airbnb method of renting. And um, we signed up for it. We tried it, you know, in 2016. We, as soon as we listed our property, I think within a week, we had three bookings scheduled. Now, the thing about Airbnb is those bookings were kind of scheduled out over the course of six, six weeks, right? It was a few days over six weeks, which wouldn't have nearly been enough to cover the mortgage over six weeks. So we, we were afraid. We got scared. You know, we decided to pull that home off the market, go ahead and rent traditionally, which is what we were accustomed to because we'd already had rentals. Um, and we decided to, you know, just say, no, this isn't for us. We're not quite ready for, to take this type of dive. Um, fast forward about, you know, four years later, we started talking about the idea again in early 2020. We had purchased another home um, and we were thinking about, you know, hey, we talked about this, but maybe we should try it. And, uh, and we did, we literally just jumped. It was one of those things where sometimes you, you literally just have to take the leap of faith. Um, and we felt that God had graced us in that season to be able to, to step out and do it. Um, and we did it. Uh, we launched our first Airbnb at the beginning of the pandemic, uh, last year. So that was early, um, February or March or so. Um, and we'd already planned to do it because we'd already, we had just bought a home with you, Cece, right? <laughs> like closed on a home, we were moving out of a home that you sold us, buying another home that you sold us. So we had to figure out, hey, we, we got to do something. You know what I mean? We didn't, you know, so uh, we decided to try the short-term rental and just see if it would work. And it absolutely worked. There were so many people, although the country was in shutdown, there were many people because our city here, Jacksonville, um, there's a ton of hospitals. So we had a lot of families that were coming for um, uh, cancer procedures, different types of surgeries, um, and they were staying for longer periods of time. So, you know, not just two or three days, but it might have been two to three weeks, mm -hmm. some people up to eight weeks. That was most of, of our, our first set of guests were for that reason. Um, as the year kind of went on, you kind of got those people who were traveling from different places because they were stir crazy, right? Florida was open still, sort of, um, and they had gotten stir crazy. So they jumped in their car and said, hey, we just need to go somewhere different. We'll all stay together. We're together as a family. We just needed to change of scenery. And we got a lot of those guests um, through the summer and, um, and everything last year. So it was really a blessing for us. It took off for us. It worked out well. I was able to acquire another property later in the year um, from actually purchasing using creative financing. And um, that was vacant, wasn't being used at all. Um, and we turned that one into an Airbnb. And that one 
took off like a rocket as well. So it's been a blessing for us. Um, I'm, I'm grateful for um, the experiences that, you know, that we've gained, but sometimes it's, uh, it can be a scary thing. And that's what folks don't realize. And I don't want to jump ahead of the questions, but it can be a scary thing to jump out into a short-term rental because it's not guaranteed income as it would be with long-term, right? It's all a gamble. Um, so there's a lot of research that has to go into it before you choose an area, before you choose your rates, before you set your marketing strategy. There's a lot that has to go into it. So, so what sort of pitfalls did you encounter? Um, I'd probably say the biggest one is um, in comparison with traditional renting, obviously the high turnover. Right. So high turnover of, of guests, you know, someone's coming every few days, maybe every couple of weeks. So people have different patterns and there's different, um, you know, things that, that people like, you know, so you got to deal with complaints, something that please one person doesn't please another. Oh, the bed is too hard or the bed is too soft. The pillows are too firm. The pillows are too soft. You know, it's I don't like plugins or I need to smell plugins. There's a lot of adjustment a lot of adjustment and you have to realize you cannot please everybody because what one person loves, the next person will hate. So um, you just have to do your best. And we had to do our very best to provide um, just excellent customer service because it's a customer service business um, and it's not personal. It's not something that you should be easily offended by or getting your feelings because somebody didn't like your decorations or whatever, you know, it's, it's a customer service business. So you are here to provide the best level of service possible. And some of that caused us to adjust our strategy earlier on um, to take away some of the customization of what we were doing because it really wasn't necessary. So we just had to adjust our strategy. So those are probably some of the biggest pitfalls. It's the, it's the learning curve. Absolutely. Absolutely. And like you point out, you know, you're not going to please everyone. And there are some people that no matter how nice it is, they're going to find something negative to say. So unfortunately with Airbnb, they're, they're doing their talking online. So how do you deal with negative reviews? So, um, you know, honestly, you, you try to hedge against that at the very beginning. You know, you want to let people know that, um, you know, your business is built around reviews and you want to do your very best up front, right? So I tell them up front, hey, we really are striving to get a positive five-star review. And I specifically say five-star review. Don't give me four because four doesn't help. <laughs> Don't give me that. Don't give me three. Uh, but a five-star review is really what we are striving for. So if there's something we could do to help us get to that level, blah, 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 blah. And for the most part, people will um, comply with that. They will tell you if there's something that they want changed. Um, some folks are just not going to review you no matter what. They don't leave reviews anyway, right? I'm a natural review person. I review the gas station. I review at the McDonald's. Like, I am a review type. I love to leave reviews because I read reviews. Like, that helps right. me drive my decisions about using certain companies or certain places. Um, so we do. We just try to be honest with them and, and ask for it. You know, you don't get it if you don't ask for it. Now, some people, you know, if... They just can't be pleased anyway. Just, you're going to have to leave your review, sis. I don't know what to tell you. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> that is a good point. So I did notice that you respond to even the, like all of the positive reviews you respond to. And thank you so much for your review. Mm -hmm. Do you find that that gets you repeat business at all? Um, it does because we've had we've actually had repeaters. So um, people that have booked with us and then they'll you know, maybe they've come back uh, a couple months later um, and then they've stayed again or they've referred someone else to come and stay. So I try to get to all of the reviews to respond. I don't do it as much as I should, um, but I try to get to all of them. Um, and, um, you know, some of them, if, if they've complained about something that you find to be not true, because once a guest puts their review out there, the only thing you can do, unless they have slandered you in some way, you can't have that review removed. The only thing you can do is combat that review with what you find to be facts. But you don't want to look like you are down downing that guest or something like that. So you just have to be really careful. I know I messed up with that earlier on because one lady, she just pushed the wrong button and I was like, but that's when I was still taking things personally and I had to get out of that. So see, that was the lesson. One of the lessons I learned, I was like, uh, you cannot take it personal. It's business. 
So aside from not taking things personally, what other advice would you give to someone who's considering offering their property as an Airbnb? Yeah, um, research, 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 research. And I know that becomes cliche um, when people say, do your research before you're starting a new venture. But this is absolutely one where you want to do your research, okay? Um, If you don't know where to start, um, I highly, first of all, the internet, right? Like it has all of the information that you need, but sometimes even that is overwhelming because there's so much information out there, right? You don't know who to trust. You don't know who to ask. Um, so, uh, one of the things Jamal and I have done, we started to, cause we were getting so many questions just on a regular basis, friends saying, Hey, we need to schedule time to talk, um, sending text messages. Hey, what about this? Or let's just, let's just have lunch or let's have dinner. That's fun. And we love having lunch and having breakfast and having chit chats with friends. But when you start getting so many of those calls, um, we realized we needed to kind of put this in a format that was a little bit more structured. Oftentimes people find it easier to get information from people they know versus going, um, you know, that's doing something that they aspire to do versus going online to look up, you know, a YouTube video or just look it up from somebody that they have no reason to believe or trust. Um, So we created a website um, last year. It's emmanuelproperties.com. And on that website, it kind of has, um, it's still in, you know, it's still in, 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 in construction, right? Ongoing. But we created a platform that would allow people to book consultations. Um, We do a free consultation. Sometimes you, you just have those, well, where do I start? Or how do I even get a property? Or, you know, and we kind of assess where you are in that consultation period. If you already have a home that you want to rent out, if you are looking to buy a home. Yeah. So we, we had to create a platform um, to be able to answer some of those questions for people, you know, helping people understand, um, the finances around Airbnb. There's a lot of work that has to be done financially before you decide on what place you're going to be hosting, right? Um, How much are typical rent rates per night in that area? Um, You know, how many competitors do you have? You know, is your area saturated? Do you have a ton of competition? Because obviously that's going to lower the amount of visitors you would probably have because they have a lot to choose from. Um, And then also you need to know what your break even is. You know, so there's just a lot of pieces to it. So how much money do you have to make in order not to lose money? We're not even talking about profit, but what do you need to bring in every month um, in order not to lose? Because remember, you're paying for all the utilities. You're paying the mortgage or the rent if there is such. Um, You're paying all of those things. So you have to do your research before you just jump in. Have to. That's good. That's very good. Well, India, as always, it's been such a pleasure talking with you. Uh, Guys, Emmanuel Properties, you have the link right there on your screen. Go out there, get some more of your questions answered. India Powell, again, thank you so much. Cece, thank you. I appreciate it.